It was supposed to be the most exclusive expedition on Earth, a daring underwater journey to the most legendary shipwreck in history, the RMS Titanic. For $250,000, zero cents per seat, a handful of adventurers, scientists, explorers, boarded a cramped experimental submersible, no larger than a minivan, placing their lives in the hands of a private company with a bold promise to take them 12,500 feet below the ocean's surface into the icy blackness of the North Atlantic. The mission was marketed as history. What it became was tragedy. On June 18, 2023, the Titan submersible, operated by Ocean Gate Expeditions, disappeared less than two hours into its dive. What followed was five days of global headlines, desperate rescue efforts, sonar pings, oxygen countdowns, conspiracy theories, and finally confirmation of what experts feared most. The sub had imploded under immense pressure, instantly killing all five souls aboard. The world mourned, but as the facts unraveled, a darker, more uncomfortable question began to emerge. Was this disaster preventable? To understand the Titan tragedy, you need to understand the vessel itself and the man behind it. Stockton Rush, CEO and founder of OceanGate, was no ordinary businessman. He saw himself as a pioneer, a disruptor, someone challenging old models with innovation and risk. He famously said, at some point, safety is pure waste. That quote would later echo across newsrooms like a warning ignored. Unlike traditional deep-sea submersibles, Titan was not certified by any major regulatory body. It was built with experimental materials, including carbon fiber, which had never before been tested at titanic depth pressures in a manned vehicle. Its hull was bolted shut from the outside, meaning once you were inside, you were committed. There was no escape hatch, no backup system, no approved design. Even more bizarre? The sub was controlled by a modified video game controller, no joke. A wireless Logitech controller powered the directional navigation. Inside, the conditions were spartan. No chairs, no bathroom, just a bottle and a curtain. No lights except for small LEDs. And yet, despite these red flags, high-profile clients signed up among them Hamish Harding, a billionaire adventurer who had gone to space with Blue Origin. Paul Henri Narjolet a legendary Titanic expert and former French Navy commander, Shahzada and Suleiman Daoud, a father-son duo from a prominent Pakistani business family, and of course, Stockton Rush himself, all of them boarding Titan on that fateful morning, expecting a thrill of a lifetime. The dive began at approximately 8 a.m. on June 18. The mothership, Polar Prince, deployed Titan into calm seas, Communication was normal for the first hour and 45 minutes, and then, silence. No more pings, no response. Titan had vanished, just like that. What followed was a frantic, multinational rescue operation. Planes, ships, sonar buoys, remote underwater vehicles, all scouring an area the size of Connecticut. The U.S. Navy reportedly detected a catastrophic acoustic anomaly, just hours after Titan disappeared, a sound consistent with an implosion, but didn't release that information publicly for days, fueling hope that the crew might still be alive. The media covered an oxygen countdown to the minute, dramatizing the idea that the crew might be stuck alive on the seafloor. Families waited in horror, but deep down, most experts knew. If the sub had imploded, it was over instantly. And that's exactly what happened. On June 22, wreckage from the Titan was found roughly 1,600 feet from the Titanic's bow. The implosion was so sudden, so violent, that experts said the pressure would have crushed the vessel in less than 30 milliseconds, faster than the human brain can register pain. The people inside likely never knew what hit them. The haunting irony? They died just meters away from the very shipwreck they came to witness. But the story didn't end with the recovery of debris. In fact, that's when the real questions began. Investigators and experts around the world began piecing together a troubling pattern. OceanGate had ignored multiple warnings. A former employee had been fired after raising concerns about the vessel's safety and lack of testing. 
industry veterans had begged the company to seek third-party certification in emails and interviews, Stockton Rush appeared to brush off those criticisms, viewing them as bureaucratic roadblocks. He believed innovation came from risk. But at what cost? Even the materials used became points of controversy. Carbon fiber, while lightweight, is known to degrade under cyclical pressure. Every deep dive weakens it just a little more. Engineers speculated that microcracks could have formed on previous trips, weakening Titan's hull. The fatal dive may have simply been the straw that broke it. The absence of a fail-safe, escape system, or even a way to open the hatch from inside now seemed unforgivable. As one naval expert put it, it was a one-way trip if anything went wrong. The public reaction was intense and complicated. Some mourned the deaths as tragic, others ridiculed the mission as a reckless vanity project for the ultra-wealthy. Memes flooded the internet. Debates erupted about whether those on board were brave pioneers or arrogant thrill-seekers. The fact that people had paid a quarter of a million dollars to board an uncertified, unregulated sub raised deeper ethical questions. Had the allure of prestige and adrenaline blinded them? Had the media glorified too many billionaire adventures without asking hard questions? But in the end, the Titan wasn't just a vessel. It was a metaphor. A metaphor for modern ambition unchecked. For innovation without oversight. For the human urge to touch danger without truly respecting it. It echoed other tragedies, like the Challenger shuttle disaster or the Columbia crash, where warnings were ignored until it was too late where brilliant minds believed their confidence could outmatch nature. But the ocean is indifferent. It doesn't care about your resume, your bank account, your dreams. At 12,500 feet, the laws of physics rule alone. Today, investigations continue. Families grieve in silence. Lawsuits may follow. OceanGate has suspended all operations. And yet the fascination with Titanic and the urge to explore it remains. But maybe the Titan implosion will become a cautionary tale for future explorers. Not a reason to stop exploring, but a reason to respect the limits. To value human life over ego. To ask harder questions before it's too late. Because the truth is chilling. The passengers aboard Titan weren't on a thrill ride. They were testing fate in a capsule that was never truly ready. And in the end, fate answered with silence, steel, and crushing depth. If this story shocked you, smash that like button to support real journalism over clickbait headlines. Comment, and never forgotten, to honor the brave souls who lost their lives chasing history. Subscribe for more untold stories from the edge of science, ambition, and tragedy. And turn on the bell, because the truth is always deeper than we think.